Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I sign my emails. More organization means more time for crafting. I use Evernote to help me get organized. Evernote is a free app. It's designed to help us organize anything from a, writing a novel, all kinds of business projects, family projects, recipes, and much more. I have not created the Evernote app. I've only used the app to organize my products from Stampin' Up. Evernote says I've had the account since the beginning of January 2013. I fell in love with the system. I started creating notes for all the products from Stampin' Up. I shared my notes from the beginning, but eventually decided to ask for a small contribution to share my notes. The Evernote notebook is one shared notebook. When I change something in the shared notebook on my computer, that change is synchronized to my account on Evernote's computers. And then it's it synchronizes to your account if you're sharing my notebook. And then it synchronizes to your computer. I only give access to view my notebook. If you could edit the notes, you would be editing our shared notebook. And that just doesn't work with so many people sharing it. So you can't make any changes to the shared notebook. You can't add to it, but you also can't mess it up. Later, I'll explain how to copy my notes to your own personal notebook, and then you'll be able to change the notes all you want. This current products notebook has all the current products that Stampin' Up! sells as of today, June 15, 2022, when I'm recording it. So it, you may see products in here that will be retiring soon. They are in the January to June 2022 catalog. And when they retire, like best delivery, it will be retiring at the end of June, so just in two weeks. I will move this note out of the current products notebook and I will move it into the retired products notebook. And then I'll be moving in notes for the July to December mini catalog and also the celebration catalog that's July to August. It's kind of a rotating current products notebook. So I said that it has all of the products that Stampin' Up! sells, and that's not entirely true because you can buy clearance products but those are products that have been retired from Stampin' Up. I put them in my retired products notebook. I also don't keep track of the paper pumpkin kits, but there is another paper pumpkin to share notebook. I don't regularly subscribe to paper pumpkin, but because so many people come to me looking for uh, similar notebooks, I maintain this and am able to share it. And I really appreciate the several demonstrators that keep this notebook current. So I do ask for a small contribution for the current products notebook. I do not ask for a contribution for the paper pumpkin to share or the retired products notebooks. I'm usually able to get the products that are going into the current products notebook into the catalog the minute it goes live for customers. It is basically a searchable catalog and Stampin' Up! does not allow us to share the insights of the catalog. They do not allow me to share my notes before the catalog goes live. One of the benefits of being a demonstrator is advance access to the catalogs. There are sometimes products that are offered as a surprise even for demonstrators and I have a bit more trouble keeping track of those special offerings. I am very grateful when people email me to let me know I've missed something. So regarding the retired products notebook, it has a lot of notes in it, almost 6,000 right now. And as I said, I started using Evernote around 2013. I started keeping my retired products notebook current and active around 2014 or 2015. Newer than that, most of the notes should be in here and be complete. 
older than that, it's kind of a mixed bag, but others have shared their notes for retired products that they have made um, with me so I can share those notes. I also have the PDFs for quite a few catalogs so you can actually um, page through these and look at some of the older catalogs. It's kind of fun to look through them. I don't have every single catalog ever, but I've got a lot of them. So you should be able to find most of the products in here, either by having notes or by searching the catalogs themselves. I really wish that I had every single retired product listed, but honestly, I have a hard enough time keeping up with the current products that are coming out. To share my notebook, you're going to go to bevadams.com and you're going to click, I've got shop, inspiration, getting organized, and Evernote current products. So you're going to click Evernote current products. And then I have a little bit of an explanation. And then I have a PayPal button. When you click this, you want to be sure to enter the address you plan to log into Evernote with. Then PayPal notifies me and I will send the invitation to you. If I happen to be away from my computer, I might not see that right away, but I'm on my computer way too often. So it so usually happens pretty quickly. Um, if you don't get the invitation from Evernote and also an email from me within 24 hours, please email me. And you can email me here on my website um, and I'll look into it. Go to evernote.com slash download. And you're just going to click the download button, either one of these download buttons. The way you get it then installed on your computer depends on how your computer is set up. When I download apps, they go into a download folder and I have to open that folder and click the EXE. It looks like a long code and ends in EXE. And that's the file that actually installs the program. You may have to look where your computer installs it. Once you have paid me and you've got the app, then you're going to open the app. And when you first get Evernote, this is all closed up. You're going to look for shared with me and open that up and you should see current products listed. I have a lot of things, but you'll see current products listed kind of like this. And then you're going to click it and it will start to synchronize. Evernote tends to synchronize very slowly. So you might not see anything happen right away. You may need to open up. There's this little triangle to the left of the notebooks word to see the notebooks that are there. It will probably say something like my first notebook. And then hopefully current products will start showing up. But it may take an hour. It might even take longer than that. It might not even be a bad idea to leave Evernote on and your computer on, even overnight if you've got a slow computer or slow internet. Um, if you don't see it by the next day, email me and I'll see if we can get you up and running. If you sign up for the basic free version of Evernote, you're limited to having it on two devices. A device is a phone or a laptop or a tablet or a desktop. And for some strange reason, Evernote considers the web version as a device. I'm not really sure I understand why. So if you have it on the web version and also on your computer, that's two devices and you can't add it to another one. You may get this message when you try to install Evernote on your computer. They are clearly trying to get you to upgrade. You do not need to get upgrade. That is going to um, be a paid version. Look in the middle and it says stay with your current plan and unsync a device. You want to click there to get rid of your old computers that may be still connected with Evernote. Even if you get a new computer, that old computer is still synchronized with Evernote, but you actually have to disconnect it or unsync it 
through Evernote in order to add another computer. To go to your account, you're going to go up here. This may be your initial. I have my name. It may have your, your email address there, depending on how you logged into Evernote. But you're going to click that. You're going to go here to your account information. And then you'll see all of that. So let's take a look at the view. There are three columns. And these all can slide bigger and smaller, depending on how you like it. Um, there's also a scroll bar on all three of them if there's enough content to be longer. Left view, this is where your account information is. Here's the search bar. This big green button is to create a new note. Um, shortcuts, notes gets you to all notes rather than one particular notebook. Tasks is like a to-do list. I most often just look at the notebooks list. So again, there's shared with me and that's where you're gonna connect with my notebook. There's a work chat, which is like Evernote's own messaging system and then the trash. The center column has your notes list. At the top, it tells you what notebook you're in. So let me go back to the current products notebook. This shows you how many notes are in the notebook. This icon shows that there's other people that are sharing the notebook. This is your sorts option, and it usually starts out by updated. So if you have the updated, the newest notes are going to be at the top. I like to keep mine usually title and it starts out with symbols if there are some and then numbers and then A to Z. And you can just slide down and it's pretty quick to find your note that way. But you can also search for notes in your search box. This is the funnel and this is the this is how you filter to find what you need. And I usually use tags. Tags are things that I've intentionally put in a note to help you find groups of things. So you can find all of the notes that have animals, all of the cards that I think would be good for an anniversary card, all of the baby cards, all of the things uh, for birthday, all of the, if you want a specific color, then you're going to type in the name for the color in the search box. But if you want a category of colors, so like all the blues, if you click blue, you're going to find all the things that have blue in it. That might be balmy blue, anything, all the designer series paper that have blue. Coastal Cabana is kind of a blue green, so I've tagged that with both blue and green. Sometime take a look through all of the tags and look at all the categories of things that you can look for. This is also the view options. And so it usually starts out with a snip, snippet view, but there's also a side list, a top list, and I have to go over here to change it. There's a cards list. But I actually prefer myself that snippet view. But you can choose whatever you like best. Whatever you click here in the center is what's going to show up here in the notes list. And let me take you through a note. I'm going to take you to a fish and a wish. At the top of the note, it will have the name of the product, the catalog. So this is the 2022 to 2023 annual catalog, and it's on page 70. I repeat the title here. This shows you uh, when it started being offered by Stampin' Up. Set of, in this case, it's cling stamps. It might be number of dies. It could be how many markers. It could be um, how many ounces in a bottle. If it's a stamp set, I have suggested blocks. If, it, if the product coordinates with something else, that's listed here by name. If it's in a bundle, and this is a link to the bundle. So if I click there, it actually takes me to the bundle note. 
going back to the a fish and a wish, um, I have the, the name again, and here's where you're going to find the item number. And this is um, from the online store at Stampin' Up. If the product comes in other languages, I have the other name for it. And also, if it's a translated product, I have the, the item number. Then I also have the image. This one is in German. Then I have the prices. I do share my notebook with people all over in all of the markets. I share it with people in all of the US. There's only two states, Rhode Island and Vermont, I think it was, that aren't sharing. I also have people in Canada, in Australia, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Germany, France, UK. Then below that, I have the greetings. I type in all of the words in the English. When you put something in a search box, Evernote actually starts searching even the images for the words. So it not only is searching what I've typed in, it's searching all of the pictures. But when it searches the pictures, sometimes there's false positives. So it's starting to look at maybe these little lines and it might think it's letters. It's also looking for English words in the German version. And a lot of times it makes mistakes. So when you type in in the search box, you will get the things that I've typed in, but you also might get extra things. I've also tried to um, describe all the images that I see. If you think that I should have a different word or an additional word in this list, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to include it. In this case, it is a German stamp. If you are willing to type in the German and send it to me, I would love to include that. These are some things that I have put here. This is to remind me how to tag it. So this particular um, note will have a stamps. It'll be, uh, it'll have a tag for love, thanks and support, which is where it is in the catalog. It's a cling stamp. It's a distinctive stamp. It's got animals, so the fish and birds and anything that's an animal I have included. Um, I think that it would be good for an encouragement card and get well, inspirational. Nautical isn't really the word I need to use, maybe aquatic, but anything that has to do with lakes, ocean, rivers, I tag it with that. And thanks. Here's where you actually see those tags. Uh, you don't see them all but you can go up to these three dots in the upper right corner and click on edit tags. And then you see all the tags that I've um, put in there. So I've also tagged at Stampin' Up! products. Every note that's in all three of my shared notebooks should be tagged Stampin' Up! product. Anything that's in the current products notebook should be tagged current product. If there's a bundle available, it's got that tag. To search, you can search with the tags or you can search with the search box or you can do both of those. I think the very first thing you should do is look for the tags. So narrow down your selection. In my written tutorial, I suggested searching the tags for stamps. As soon as I click on stamps, I've gone from 914 to 176 notes with stamps. If I click on photopolymer, photopolymer is really redundant because anything that is photo, Maybe you like just using photopolymer stamps. So now I'm down to 73 notes that are photopolymer. And then maybe I wanna make a card for a kid. So 
now I'm down to six notes. Now I could start looking through here if I wanted to. Um, maybe I want to make a birthday card. So I'm going to click birthday. Now I'm down to two notes, but maybe the kid likes animals. So I'm gonna put animals. And now I've narrowed it down to just one stamp set that has um, animals, birthday, and kids. Maybe you're looking for a particular phrase. And so if you, and you want a stamp that says happy birthday, if you put happy birthday, it is actually looking for the word happy and birthday. And it is making some suggestions. But if I put return, it's found 45 stamps that say that have the word happy and birthday. So there's happy birthday in a grandkid. There's happy birthday in adventurous journey. There's happy birthday, but there might be one that just says happy and isn't a birthday. If you want to say, and remember, I've got 45 notes. If I wanted the words happy birthday together, I can put quotation marks on it. And now I've got 39 stamps that say happy birthday. And these should all say happy birthday together. Again, that you can look for all of the dies that you own. So let me start typing in dies and notice I've just got the D and the I, and it is suggesting to look for um, things that have D, I in it, but it's also suggesting the dies tag and the distinctive tag. Well, wedding does have a D and an I in it. So I can click dies and see all of the dies. I can close out of that and find all of the DSP, the designer series paper. I can click out of the DSP, I can add that tag, and I can find all the DSP that's in real red. Now that's interesting because that doesn't have real red in it. But I see that Evernote has highlighted down here. This is one of those false positives I was talking about. It's looked in this picture of a fern and said, does that say real red there? So that's a false positive. But if I put quotation marks around this, it's probably got 10 notes. Let's see what happens with quotation marks around real red. So now I only have two real red, the Regal's designer series paper and the Sweet Talk, which will be retiring soon. But I'm pretty sure that there's quite a few um, Real Red Designer Series paper in the upcoming mini catalog. You can double click. It did revert back to all notes. So let me go back to the current products notebook. And you can pick on any one of these things. But when I double click on that center column, it opens up in a whole new window showing all of the um, that note in the full screen. So if I wanted to show you um, my account. When you click your account summary, it will tell you um, what level you have paid for. You only need the free basic. Basic level, you are limited to how many new notes that you can create. This is my monthly usage, but my monthly limit resets in 15 days. If you're on the basic level, it does mean that you will probably fill up your um, data limit if you have a lot of products and you're working diligently to get all of your products copied. So this shows how many days you have to wait till it resets. But the very best thing about Evernote is that you can create a notebook for your own products. My own products are in Bev's stuff. So these are the things that I actually have on my shelf. So I have just a few retired products. I have things that are not really Stampin' Up! products at all. 
um, but I use them in my craft room. And so I can look through what I own and that is wonderful. You can create your own notebook by using this new notebook button, or you can go up to file and new notebook. Then you're gonna get this window and it's gonna ask your name for your notebook. I think you should name it something that identifies it as yours and your crafting things. I don't think you should limit it to just Stampin' Up. I don't think you should limit it to current products. Um, whatever you have in your craft room that helps you craft should be included in your notebook. So I'm just gonna call it, um, I don't even think you should call it stamping. Um, you could call it my craft products. and then create. And now I have my craft products listed, but there's nothing in it. So I'm gonna to go to the current products again, and you're gonna copy the notes for all the products that you own. I think it's gonna be helpful to start with your stamps. So let's add the tag for stamps. And then actually go over to your craft room. I'm going to click on a fish and a wish. And I'm going to right click and copy to. Now I was working with somebody else on Zoom and they did not have copy to here. So you can also go up to these three dots in the top right of your window and copy to. Then you're just gonna pick the notebook, my craft products and copy it. You do get a very brief notice that you copied a fish and a wish. And then you're gonna find the next stamp set on your shelf. Again, copy to and put it in my craft products, copy it. And then you're going to click another one and copy it. And now I put three stamp sets in, go over to my craft products and there's my three um, notes. Again, that might take you some time, but you will be glad when you have put the time in to copy the products for everything in your craft room. Once you've copied that note, it is your note. So in the current products notebook, again, I'm always adding new products. When a product is carried over from one catalog to the other, I put the new page numbers in here. None of those changes will happen in your notes in your own notebook. But you can make all the changes that you want. So if, if this were to carry over into next year's catalog, you can go ahead and change that catalog and the page number. Maybe you decide that you do not need the German version. So you can just delete that. Um, and maybe you don't need the, maybe you just need the US prices if you're in the US. Maybe you don't need any of this. I do recommend that you leave the greetings and the images in so that it's there for searching. Maybe you're in a tiny house and you don't have a shelf with all of your stamps in it. You can put in your note where the stamp is located. And I don't know where you'd want to put it. Maybe you want to put it here. And you can say it's in the yellow box under the bed. And you will save yourself a lot of time searching for your products. If you make a card with your stamp set, you can add a picture of the card that you make. If you have your card stock in here, you can put the color combinations that you like with a color. You can say, I think that this stamp set goes well with 
botanical layers and you can kind of make your own cross reference that they go together. You can add more tags. So maybe you think that this is a, a great stamp that you want to use for um, your Aunt Mabel. You can just click on add a tag and then it's typed to add a tag and you can put Aunt Mabel. Now I don't have an Aunt Mabel tag. So, but as soon as you type that and press enter, now there is a an Aunt Mabel tag. You might want to put in the date that you bought a stamp set or the date that you showed it to your friends. A lot of people are looking for the save button. There is no save button anywhere on Evernote. It automatically saves. I think that that's probably plenty to fill your brains right now. I will be coming up with new videos, more about how to copy notes, uh, more about um, how you can use Evernote for creating a project, how to create your own notes. Those will come in future videos. Here is the web address for this project. I have lots of resources on my website. Most of them are free. It's easy to miss some of those resources or to get lost exploring. Let me take you on a quick tour. Just under the banner image are six links. Under Shop, you'll find links to the products from Bev, Shopping Strategies, My Frequent Shopping Points, and a sampling from the clearance rack. Under Inspiration, you can link to scroll all of my projects since 2011. The products may be retired, but you may be inspired by a layout, color combination, or a technique. I have the basics, where I've written about stamps, ink, and paper, cutting, adhesives, and my favorite tools. You'll find a link to Techie Tips and an easy link back to my latest post. Click on Getting Organized, and you'll find some of my resources for stamp case slips, product labels, large labels, for designer series paper and more. Case inserts for dies, embellishments, and anything I think might fit in a stamp case, including ink refills. You'll also find color tools and charts, a practically free stamp pad storage solution, tabs and a quick reference for the annual catalog, and plans for toolkits. I have a video of my craft wall and more. Click on Evernote Current Products and you can learn how to share my notebook. This notebook has a note for every current product from Stampin' Up. It allows you to search by color, image, product type, word, phrase, or event, and more. I include French, German, and Dutch names and numbers when available, and the prices for all the markets. Evernote synchronizes on your phone, tablet, and or your desktop or laptop computer so you can look through the Stampin' Up! catalog from anywhere, anytime. You can copy my notes for the products you own, so you can find just what you're looking for. When products retire, I move them to the Retired Products Notebook, which I also share, and I host a notebook for Paper Pumpkin. Click on Sip Together, and then let Stamp to come stamp with me or join my Sip Together team. There's also a link to learn a bit about me, the site map will help you navigate all these links from one page. And there are quick links along the side of my page. Shop Now takes you to my online store at Stampin' Up. You'll see the current host code. It would be a great help to me if you use that if you are ordering less than $150. You can click on the current catalogs to page through them online. And then there are my links to my five most recent posts. Thank you very much for stopping by and hope to see you soon.